Now we will move to the next panelist, Mr. Sam. He is representing INCA. So when we talk about uh, EPC, uh, INCA is one of the major players in Kerala, who is always working along with KCB. So in terms of uh, hand in with uh, KCB, the most of the projects you have done. So my question to you is, have you ever faced major challenge working with KCB? And uh, are they the good paymasters? Or do you think it would be good for the other players who are looking for an opportunities in Kerala uh, would definitely have something uh, positive news from you all? Thank you, Tadans. My name is Sam. I'm representing Inga Limited. Inga is a public private partnership company initiated by government of Kerala in uh, connection with NRIs. See, as he said, uh, we did the major projects for KCB uh, since last maybe three, four years. We did around 14 megawatt plus we have commissioned and another some around 12 to 13 megawatts under execution now. See, as he said, uh, initially we have uh, faced a lot of problems. Uh, maybe in 2017-18, these times when uh, KCB placed order, we start the execution. Like uh, they provide uh, land wherever uh, it is available. Now the challenges we face is uh, like site clearance, removing trees. As you know, Kerala is full of green energies, but get, removing tree from the particular uh, government areas, it's very difficult we have to get uh, clearance from forest department and uh, this uh, one empire these people. So these are the uh, problems uh, we initially faced. It. So now I think uh, it has changed a lot now because the last two years, whenever they place a order or when we take the orders, uh, we get, uh, you know, we take over the land once the tree cutting is, everything is cleared and it is ready to install. So um, then come to the payment terms. Uh, in uh, 17, 18, 18, 19, 20 years, See, as per the KCB terms, once you supply the material like uh, module, mo module, mounting boundary structures, inverters, and transformers, they will pay only 30% of the uh, project cost. When we spend 70 to 80% uh, you know, money for the material, we'll get at least only on 30%. 30%. That are very big challenges for us for uh, initial stages. But I think last one, one and a half year, there is a lot of changes happened. When, uh, as you know, that uh, Mr. Susser has taken charge of uh, Reese director. He put a lot of effort to uh, release the payment uh, on time, as well as he put a lot of pressure to complete the project on time. So um, now uh, the same thing, same way. Like now also, like you know, thirty percent is not sufficient for us. Uh, now we another has been changed to the payment terms from uh, thirty percent to now. I think fifty six to sixty percent. I think sixty percent, sixty percent. So to I think uh, KCB also come forward for uh, such kind of payment terms because. Now, if you go for a uh, project, you have to pay upfront payment or 30 days advance payment for getting modules or input or whatever it is. So this all be very difficult for going forward. So I think uh, KCP also taking some initiative to release some more uh, like instead of 30% to uh, 50 or 60%. So these are the problems we are facing. Thank you, sir. It's very really happy to know that the KCB become the master payer now. So that also gives us a great hope for a small place to take up more projects in KCB. So we'll move to the next uh, panelist, Mr. Fido Jose, CEO Ace Technology. 
so mr sido what kind of uh, opportunities do you identify in the renewable energy sources especially in kerala yeah good morning uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, my name is sido dos and uh, i represent ace technologies uh, we are basically into uh, the utility space commercial and industry uh, and you were asking me about the opportunities uh, in kerala i mean uh, just like in any other part of india i mean kerala has also got a very good opportunities out there and uh, i mean i like to mull upon the uh, regulatory side or the you know from the, from the developers of epc part of it. Uh, the regulations uh, prevailing today i think uh, is uh, kcr and solar regulation 2022 uh, but i mean it's uh, there are many many uncertainties in this uh, 2022 a uh, solar regulation from the point of view of a developer or a epc uh, like i mean uh, see all the all the regulations of 2022 will come into effect only uh, i mean once the kcb achieves this uh, solar rpo or rpo so uh, i don't know when exactly i mean kcb is going to achieve the rpo because once they achieve the rpo definitely all the regulations will come into effect like gross metering uh, gross metering is not not the uh, maybe i don't know how long it will take for gross metering i think the mr anusha will be in a better we have position. already set for a second question for him so he will be answering so i mean so the thing is like uh, see we are developing a couple of uh, utility scale projects and uh, my question or i mean what is very some to me is like i mean if gross metering comes into effect once uh, we commission the project then we will be in a big zoo um, so these kind of uncertainties are there uh, so these kind of uncertainties have to be addressed first then only i mean it would be better for the developer or for the epc to uh, to execute projects and uh, will be in a better position for the investor to be confident and uh, he will start investing thank you definitely without any regulations we won't be able to do in a proper business we even we won't be able to expand the business in a big way but uh, the regulation uh, by 2022 has almost helped the uh, renewable energy uh, business sector but uh, the regarding the gross meter uh, the decision has not yet to come but uh, we we hope for uh, probably this is not the right time to introduce the gross meter in kerala so we will hear from the kcb said later on, on this so before that we will move to the other uh, speaker mr vengit kumar um he is hailing from hyderabad i believe yeah so uh, it's very uh, happy to see the other players national players are peeping eye on the kerala market so that is something which gives us a more confident so what kind of an uh, opportunities or w- what would be your target of doing business in kerala coming a uh, couple of years i would say that so what attract you to get into kerala market um, can you just uh, uh, show some light on your thoughts on kerala market first of all uh, thank you thank you for the question and uh, i thank uh, you for giving me this opportunity we are the only wind solar hybrid solution company in the country and asia as of now we are the small wind solar hybrid solutions with world class wind turbines and we provide uh, solutions to various domains and you know we are mainly into off grid applications uh, in the speech uh, that anand was talking in the morning he was talking about storage and the importance of storage and challenges of solar and wind if you look at solar it is like you know you have more power concentrated in 4 hours and it gets stored after which it has to be stored for 20 hours and because of, and based on the state of the battery it slowly gets discharged if you look at wind it has i'm talking about small wind it has small power throughout the day so if we combine both the things because of the trickle voltage or opportunity charging the battery status or the battery storage is always healthy so having said that we started working on this and 
we got into this country seven years back when small wind was ruled out, saying that you know it does not work. You know, I I should thank the progressive state of Kerala to be adopting this uh, hybrid technology in powering remote hamlets. That's what got us here. We are powering almost all four or five hamlets through Omo, which have been not been powered since past 70 years of independence. You know, the places like Thai Thodikki, Mail Thodikki and other places where there are 40, 50 houses. So we are building mini grids in those areas. And let me tell you, the, we have to carry these panels, including the cement bags and construction material for almost all three and a half to four kilometers by foot into the forest. And it needs a lot of coordination between multiple departments, including forest department, energy department, and other people. And it has been a really good experience for all of us, you know, in, in my company as well as in my domain. So I feel very welcomed coming to this, uh, uh, this state of Kerala when it comes to executing projects. And we also have been trying to promote powering the small fishermen boat using our product. Okay. So, and it was also stated in the budget speech of Kerala that they are trying to adopt hybrid technologies in small time fishing boats and other applications, which I also feel very encouraged of. And when it comes to utility scale, which is a topic, you know, we are now working on infill technology, which means that you have solar panels that are put in and you can build a wind wall towards the fence of the solar panels where there is, I mean, if you look at a one megawatt of wind, you're talking about three, four kilometers, three, four acres of place, which is free and beyond five meters, there is nothing that obstructs. So we are trying to come up with wind wall kind of a scenario where we cover one or two parts of, I mean, two sides of this uh, solar farm with the wind walls and the Kerala has a very, very long coastline and we are trying to come up with, you see, if you look at bird classes wind turbines and a cluster of bird classes wind turbines, a 25 kilowatt system would not take more than 25 meters by one meters place and aesthetically beautiful. So rather than going on offshore, we are trying to build an onshore wall kind of a thing, you know, so we are trying to come with innovative ideas. but. All said and done, in India, alternate energy has become only a standby energy. It has not been pushed as a needed energy. I'm pretty sure in the morning, you know, when people have been asked, you know, do you buy an iPhone or a Samsung phone when they are not carbon neutral? I, I mean, and, and it's a fact you know, that no one bothers about it. But I really congratulate all the entrepreneurs that are in the renewable energy business because once you miss a client, you miss a client for 20 years, minimum. And number two, the corporate social responsibility is a part of the business principle, not an additional responsibility in this kind of business is what I think. And KCB, uh, Energy Management Center and Enert have some serious officers who are really taking this business seriously. And I really congratulate and I feel really welcomed as, as I repeat this quote. I really feel welcomed coming into the state and I feel proud to be associated with that kind of progressive people working in this. And thank you for this opportunity. Thank you very much, Mr. Vengdes. It's very happy to know that you are helping the fisherman community to come up with an energy solutions with your innovative products. That's really appreciated. Um, in fact, uh, Sakela, we are looking forward to have a more products, something like that, so that we can cover the needy people's energy requirement. Now, 